So in turn five now, we'll actually have some combat going on and maybe these guys might wake up. So everybody is tallying somebody now apart from these guys. And nobody is, is wanting to drop tallies at this point and try and redo them. So they're going to have another attempt to tally somebody. And they're going to attempt to tally the P40B flight here. At the moment, they are actually behind them and below them. They've actually got a minus two modifier just for that. They've got their plus one for being veteran. And that's it. So they got minus one on their tally roll. Oh, they got a five this time. So four, but that's two squares away. That actually worked. So, hooray! They've finally woken up. They are now alerted. And the P40Bs are now tallied. Now, this goes away because they're not climbing anymore. And now interesting things can happen. So, moving. The bombers move. So this one moves forward too. Now these guys can catch up with them because they've got the tally on them. So that's one, two, three. They are now in this square with the bombers. They can attack them. But these guys have also spotted P40B. So what they're going to do is dive. Oops. Uh, dive. And they're going to go one, two, like that. Now they also get a bonus for diving. So this is going to be a three-way combat, or at least involving three combatants here. So now that's all done, this squadron can move forward. They'll move forward too. And then these guys will climb up and they use all three of their movement points to do that. Now they're going to take a bit longer to catch up, I guess. So they won't catch up with them for another two turns, I think. Depending on what happens here, these sweeps could be broken in this combat. I wouldn't say it's terribly unlikely, but it's it's a possibility. So at that point, we've just got this squadron against this squadron and whatever's left of the bombers. And it's also unlikely that the P-40B flight here will survive because being a flight and being green, they're very fragile. So they're probably going to go away, but let's see if they can do any damage to anybody. So this is good. Fortunately, the dice actually favored us here in terms of making things interesting because we actually have a more complex combat than we had in the previous video. So, what have we got? At the moment, what I'm doing with the bomb loads is that the bombers are just going to keep hold of their bombs. They do have the option of dropping them in the movement phase, or at the end of the combat phase. But I'm going to just let them keep them for now, because they're on their way to bomb somebody, and as far as they're aware, at this point, the situation isn't desperate enough for them to just drop all the bombs and head for home. So we'll keep their bomb load there so they'll have that minus one to their speed and turn ratings. When we look at the combat summary, we determine the attacker and the attacker is going to be the Chinese because the side with the bomber is always the defender. Now we want to determine what rating they want to use and we already determined that we are going to be making this a speed combat. It's not a head-on or anything like that anyway, so it's just a normal speed combat. So now we figure out what the differential is. We've got a bit of a complication here because what we have, if I just, let's just move this up a little bit, this is all still in the same square, is a bomber and a fighter squadron and a fighter flight in the same square. So we've got multiple combatants in the same square. And what that means is we have to determine who the primary combatant is. And that's going to be determining all of the roles for that side. You want to pick the participant that gives you the best bonuses. The speed and the turn of the Hayabusa at this altitude is 3 and 5. But it's a speed fight, so their speed is 3. The bombers are 
a speed of three as well, but that's modified down to a two because of their bombs. The Hayabusa, on the other hand, is at speed of three, but it's diving, so it's got a basic speed of four. It's also a veteran, so that's a plus one, and that's it. If we went for the Hayabusa, it would get a plus two on its total speed, so it'd be five. If we went with the bomber, we would have a speed of three minus one for the bomb load, so that's a two. But it gets a plus one for each additional fighter squadron or flight involved. So it would get a plus one because the Hayabusas are in the fight. And then that's the only contribution that the Hayabusa would have at that point. So the net would be just a straight three there really, wouldn't it? So in this case, I think we're actually better off going with the Hayabusa. So that has a five. So let's go back up here and top things up. So the defenders of the Japanese are going to be at five. The flight here is not climbing. It's It's got a speed of four at this altitude, but it's got that minus one for being green and it's also minus one for being a flight. So it's at a two. So actually they're at a pretty big disadvantage now aren't they because of the higher boosters getting involved if they weren't involved if the higher boosters didn't finally spot them and dive on them then it would be just a straight fight against the flight and the bomber squadron the bomber squadron would have a speed of three reduced to a two because of their bomb load and that would be it so it would be a an even fight. It'd be a zero and a zero. But because the Hayabusa's got involved, this is now going to turn into a bit of a disaster for the attacker. So we're actually at the right spot here. The attacker has minus three, and the bombers and the Hayabusa's have a differential of plus three there. So that's not great. So this is not a bounce. So remember, this is where they actually all are. Even though the Hayabusa's came from up here, from out of the sun, they're not the attacker. The attacker, it's a bounce if the attacker bounces the defender. Uh, but that's not the case here. The, the attacker is actually the P-40B. The P-40Bs can't evade either because they're not the defenders. So it's just going to be a straight roll either way. Nobody's got any modifiers on the actual die roll here. Right, so having got through all that, let's roll for the attacker, who in this case is P40B, on the minus three column. They rolled a two, and uh, they're not gonna hit anyone. The defender, which are the Japanese, are rolling on the plus three column, and they roll a 10. So again, they have no modifiers on this either. That's a three hit potential there. So we will roll for the losses. We want to just roll a straight D6. Adding the primary combatant's firepower. So the primary combatant, remember in this case, are the higher boozers. They've got a firepower of zero. So there's no modifier to the roll at all. It's just a straight D6 roll on the losses. And the P40B has protection of 3 and 4. So we have got a 1, which is a miss. A 6, which is a loss. And a 5, which is a loss. So remember, if it's above 4, it's going to be a loss. So they've got two losses. Now they are veteran, so they've got a plus 1. They haven't taken any losses. They are not on the attacking side. And they also don't have a radio though. So the plus 1 is cancelled by not having a radio. But they haven't been involved in any fights or anything. So it's a straight roll. 6 or less is going to be a problem. So, bleh. rolled a 10. So the high boosters are fine. They are still holding it together. The bombers have no modifier. They want to roll high. They roll a six. If they were a fighter, that would be a problem. But because they're bombers, they're only disrupted on a four or less. So they're fine as well. The flight now, 
the P40s are going to be in trouble. For one thing, they use the flight column. So a six or less on the flight column means that they are broken. They don't get disrupted, they're just broken immediately. They've got a minus two to the roll because they've got two losses already. And then they've got another minus one because they're green. So that's a minus three in total. They've got a plus one because they're attacking though. So that's a minus two now. And that's it. So they got a minus two on their roll. So yeah, they're all the six. They're broken straight away. So as expected, they're broken up and they go home. They lose their tally as well. They don't keep their tally once they're broken. They're just split up, going all their separate ways. The other two planes have decided that discretion is a better part of valor here. And they're leaving. They are still tallied by the Hayabusa's, however. But it's up to them whether they want to continue tallying them or whether they want to drop the tally and try and spot the other guys coming up. So they're going to want to let them go that's it for them the only other thing now is that we finally get to put a an ammo counter down so at the end of the combat the higher boosters will get a minus one on their ammo so that will make them a little bit more fragile in the next combat when it comes to cohesion and that is it for that turn there's nothing else to do admin wise so we will move on to turn six now what's gonna happen is that the tally from the higher boosters will be dropped because they don't care about the p40bs anymore and they will instead attempt to tally these guys so they're two squares behind the higher boosters have that rear view thing remember so they have a modifier of plus one because they're veteran and that is it the target is not in the sun target is behind them but they have rear view so they don't care about that so they've actually got a plus one so they're one two three squares away and they're all the six so they have tallied them finally these guys have woken up they are now tallied by b then we have movement these guys move forward too then these guys move too the AP40B squadron can straighten out and move forward three so they're gonna go one two three they didn't climb so this goes away these guys didn't dive this turn either so that goes away Essentially, they've just entered the square that the higher boosters were in, and there's going to be a fight now. These don't have to move, and then the P-40B flight that is broken is going to head down and out. They're going home. So we're going to have a combat in this spot behind the bombers, and what happens here will determine the fate of the bombers. If the higher boosters can see off the so far untouched p40b squadron then those bombers are going to be safe but if they get kicked out then these guys can have a crack at the bombers next turn so we'll see what happens that's all the movement combat is now going to ensue let's see who the attacker is first and in this case the higher boozers have the tally on the p40s so that makes the higher boozers the attacker but also, it is going to be a bounce, because the defender is a fighter squadron with a tally on a squadron outside its current square. And if it's going to be a bounce, then that means that the defender can't evade either. So that makes things a little more interesting. Get back up to our table. And then let's have a look at the Japanese ratings. Our speed as the Hayabusa's is 3 but our turn is five. That is definitely advantageous when it comes to comparing with the P40B. So we're gonna go with a turn combat now. So the higher boozer's basic speed here is a five. We don't have a bomb load or diving or climbing or anything, so that's their basic speed. They are also a veteran, so that adds one, so that's a six. They're not a flight, they're not disrupted or broken that's it so their total is six 
The P40B with their turn is four and they are a veteran as well. So they're actually four plus one. So that's five. So that's not as big a difference as it could be. So the attacker is rolling on the plus one. Defender is rolling on the minus one. Now defender is bounced. And this is not a head-on combat either. So there's no evasion, no head-on combat, but the attacker has bounced the defender. So the attacker is going to get a plus one on the die roll. And the defender is going to get a minus one on the die roll. So the attacker with a plus one. Wow, they get a ten. So that's three hits for them on the P40s. That's good for the Japanese. And the P40s with their minus one because they were bounced. Rolled an 8, minus 1 is a 7, so they get one hit back at least. Losses for the attacker on the defender. They have no modifiers and their firepower as we saw was a 0. So that is going to be 3 straight rolls. And they rolled a 3, which is a straggler. A 6, which is a loss. And a 1, which is nothing. So they've got a loss and a straggler so it's a straggler because their protection is three to four and if you roll equal to the protection then you get a straggler so that's not great for them but the warhawks fire back and they have a firepower of one so they're going to add one to their roll their single roll and it's a six anyway so they've taken one loss now we roll for the cohesion so for the japanese they've taken one loss and they are a veteran so that is minus one plus one so there's nothing there they are the attacker so that's plus one they don't have a radio so that's minus one so again that zeroes out and they have a low ammo marker so they are a net of minus one on their cohesion roll and oh they roll a three. Oh dear. Well, despite doing rather well, they've decided that they've had enough of that and they're going home. They're broken. Interesting. So now what happens to the others? The P40s have taken a loss and a straggler, but the straggler doesn't count. They are a veteran though, so that negates that. They're not the attackers, they do have radios. That's it, it's a zero. They don't have anything else. So if they roll high, they're still in the fight. They roll a seven. Seven or above is enough. They are good to go. They're still in the fight, but the higher boosters have decided that they have had enough. So that's interesting. So also the A squadron gets a low ammo. Theoretically, the higher boosters would get a depleted ammo but it's kind of irrelevant now because they're going home and the p40bs are not going to care about them so that leaves us in an interesting situation at the end of this turn because in the next turn it's just going to be the p40s and the bombers so they're going to have an opportunity to try and shoot somebody down finally their tally goes away as well admin phase now the squadrons escape and these guys will fly off and they're done so that's interesting after air combat is resolved and any dogfight determined which there wasn't one because one side broke before that could happen a fighter squadron must tally an enemy squadron that took part in that combat it places its tally marker on an enemy squadron in the combat if necessary switching it from a previous target huh so I think what that means then is that he's actually lost the tally. That tally, even though he's broken, is on that squadron now. So he's going to have to drop the tally and re-roll it. So tally gone. The Y squadron is one square in front of P40B. P40B is on the radio and is a veteran, so it's plus two. So it doesn't really matter what we roll so yeah so they do manage to switch the tally back onto them but they got kind of distracted by these guys so that's the tally then so now we move the bombers two squares forward 
and then these guys will catch up one two three and now we'll be able to fight them and these guys will head home we have one more combat at least here and i mean these bombers have just been largely unharmed here so it's just going to be a straight fight between the p40s and the bombers and again probably best to go with a speed combat so p40 is the attacker we're going to go with speed let's see what we end up with up here again the bombers have their bomb load and that makes them with a speed of three minus one and that is it and the attackers are plus one for veteran they're not disrupted or broken so they've just got a plus one and they are speed of four so they've got a five so that's a lot better now three differential they've got a decent chance to do some damage here defender will not be evading it's not a bounce that's it so i think it's just a straight roll on each side no defense ratings here because it's a speed fight so attacker again rolls a 10 nice so that's three hits on the bombers and then the defender rolls a seven which is nothing so the bombers are going to take some damage here bomber protection is four to five h so it's not a head-on combat so that is not gonna matter here but it is four to five that's quite heavily armored so three hits ideally we want sixes but four to fives will work let's see what happens uh, so two that's five that's a five so great two fives oh we add the firepower keep forgetting that we add the firepower of one so it's actually three six and six so that is two losses i mean if these guys can stay in the fight they can tear up these bombers quite handily but we'll see what happens in the cohesion now so cohesion the attackers now they've taken a loss already the a squadron again the stragglers don't count so they've taken a loss but they're veterans so that doesn't matter they're the attacking side that's plus one they do have a low ammo marker though so that's negated that so it's a straight roll Let's see what happens 11 they're fine they are holding it together quite nicely thank you very much and their ammo flips to depleted where it will now stay for the remainder of their time in the combat so they're okay are the bombers okay so the bombers have taken two losses and that is all that they get so they get a minus two on their roll a five. Oh my gosh they are a bomber squadron so that means they're disrupted they, they can't auto break but one more hit like that and they'll break which will be quite cool that's reduced the Japanese victory points somewhat. And that is it for the combat. So, one more turn. Turn 8. These guys continue to fly on. Desperately trying to ignore what's going on behind them. And these guys will also fly on. Again, like really, um, the bomber moves. And then these guys still continue to keep up with them. And, uh, oh yeah, these guys can fly off as well previously. So we just roll again. The bombers are now disrupted. The attackers are still the P-40s. We're still on the speed combat. The speed of the bombers is three minus one for their bomb. But now they're disrupted. So they're actually at one. So they could drop their bombs. They have taken some hits here. So after the movement, they could have dropped their bombs. Once they drop their bombs, though, they go return to base. So we'll keep them, even though that's a massive disadvantage to them. But if they survive this, then they'll drop their bombs and go home. But that is it. So we're now at a plus four because Warhawks here are at speed four and they're veteran. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, again there is no modifiers to anything so the attackers roll a nine 
That is two hits. That is not awful. And the defender... Oh, the defender did quite well. Roll a ten. They, they managed to get one hit in. So despite being at a huge disadvantage, they did manage to get a hit there. So the P40s are going to roll. Uh, they're going to add a plus one to their roll for their firepower. And we're going to see what happens. Uh, they've got two hits. We've got a three. Plus one is a four. That's not enough. And the other six, so that's another loss. Uh, six is a loss no matter what. And the bombers are going to get a uh, plus zero. Nothing else is going on. They're going to get a one, so that's an automatic miss. So, cohesion time again. The fighters, they've got one loss. They're veterans, so that cancels. They're the attackers, so that's plus one. But now they've got depleted ammo, so they're minus two from that. So they're a net of minus one. So this is, might break them. Seven. Seven minus one is going to disrupt them. But they're still in the fight. They are still holding on. They're just going to be even more fragile next turn. The bombers, can the bombers hold on? So if they roll badly again, they're going to break they roll four or less now they've got three losses so that's a minus three and that is it they rolled an eight minus three is five they hold it together and that is it so again we have another turn they are still in the fight these guys move off the board they're away they've got away these guys move and then these guys move and the fight continues. So, one last attempt here. Things are a bit different once more. The Chinese are disrupted as well. So they have a minus one on their speed. So the differential now is three. Then we roll for the number of hits. So attacker, again it's no modifiers on anything. Attacker gets a six, which is one hit. And the bombers get a five, which is no hits. So we've got potential for one more hit. And they add one. And that's a two. There is no hit. And that is it. So again, cohesion roll, despite the fact nobody got hit. And now is the moment of reckoning here. The fighters, again, have one loss. And are veterans, so that's negated. They are the attackers. They have depleted ammo. So it's a minus one again. So note that the fact they're disrupted already doesn't actually come into this. So it's a minus one on their roll again. Seven. Yep, that's it. Seven minus one is going to disrupt them again. And when they're disrupted again, they become broken. So that's it. So they are officially done. That is it. But they did quite a bit of damage there. Now are the bombers going to be disrupted? The bombers have minus three modifier. Oh, they did get disrupted. So three or less is disrupted again. That means they're broken. A broken bomber squadron continues moving normally. However, if it jettisons its bombs, it returns to base. So they can carry on and they will, but they essentially, their, their victory points is severely reduced. So next turn, essentially what happens is these guys move off and these guys head home and away they go and that's it. So that's the end of the combat. So now we just have to determine what our victory points are like. Each enemy loss inflicted will give the side a victory point. So if we look at the ADCs here, the Warhawks have got one victory point in the top right corner there. The Hayabusa's one victory point. Sally's are worth two. So every plane that is a loss contributes that many victory points. The Chinese will get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the Chinese have got eight victory points. So let's, I guess, let's put that up here. The Japanese get one, two, three. But the Japanese have got bombers off the map here. So if the scenario doesn't involve bombing, which it doesn't, 
they're just flying off the map to do their bombing. Then each friendly unbroken bomber or transport squadron that exits the enemy map edge with its bomb load or cargo is six victory points. Half to three victory points if the squadron was disrupted or is a flight. Score one if the squadron or flight was broken. So the Japanese have got six for the X squadron who flew off without getting entangled with anyone. And they got one for the broken squadron. So at the very last minute, they lost two victory points for that. So that's seven victory points in total. Uh, for the Japanese, so they go up to 10. And then, we look at the victory conditions in the scenario, and we subtract the Chinese victory points from the Japanese victory points to see who wins. So, Japanese is 10, minus the 8 from the Chinese is plus 2. So, plus 2 is plus 4 or less, that is a Chinese victory. So the Chinese have won this one. They just managed to inflict enough losses on the Japanese to come out triumphant at that one. So that's it. That's how a combat will work. There's definitely some interesting decisions to be made there. Not least of which is deciding who gets the veteran and who gets the green at the beginning of the scenario. Because having that flight as a green pilot as well really didn't work in their favour at all. So that was birthday present. Hopefully that was understandable. And that is a relatively basic scenario. I mean, it is literally the second scenario in the Victories second edition game. But there are others that involve wings and bombing and flak and so on that I will try to get to next. So hopefully that was useful, the guided playthrough here. So explaining things as I go along. Hopefully that will give you an idea of how to play and what sort of decisions come into the game. The next scenario will be one that involves more interesting things and we'll see how that turns out. So that's it for this scenario. So stay tuned for more. Uh, if you have any questions or comments then please do let me know in the uh, comment section of the video. And thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Ta-ta!